Hello and welcome to this video in which I explain the random intercept model for longitudinal data. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually discuss an analysis in the M Plus software and on Thursday I talk about more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter and links to courses that I offer through Quantfish. So in this video I want to introduce you to the random intercept model for longitudinal data. So let's take a look at the random intercept model and what it is used for. So assume we have a repeated, uh, repeatedly measured observed variable, for example repeatedly measured intelligence scores from the same people or repeatedly measured anxiety scores or something like that that I represented by those variables here, y1, y2, y3, and y4. So we have four measurement occasions data from the same people, and we want to know whether there's any change across time in these data. And so in this situation where we're interested in analyzing changes across time, the random intercept model comes in handy as a baseline model. It can be used to test the hypothesis of no change. And then you would know whether you have to uh, model or use more complex models at all for those repeated measures data. The random intercept model implies that there are no changes in the true scores across time and that any fluctuations in the observed scores that you see in your data for uh, individuals or so any within person differences across time are solely due to random measurement error. So it's a latent variable model that um, is a specific model of confirmatory factor analysis and that allows us to test this hypothesis of no change so that we then can decide whether we should model more complex structures, for example, using latent growth curve models or latent change score models or other types of longitudinal models. In a random intercept model, we introduce a latent factor that we might call an intercept factor or random intercept and this intercept factor has equal loadings on all repeated measures indicators. So every um, indicator, every variable at each time point has a loading of one on this intercept factor. So the loadings are fixed a priori. None of the loadings are estimated. If we estimated any of the loadings, then that would allow certain forms of changes to happen across time. Whereas when the loadings are all constrained to the same value, then that implies that those individuals don't change in their true scores across time. Another thing that is also fixed in this model, as we will see, are intercepts. So there are no additive constants in this model because those also would then, if they were estimated, would permit changes across time. Furthermore, we have error variables for which variances are estimated. So there is a distinction made in this model between true score variance, which is represented by the intercept factor. So that would be the reliable variance that would indicate true differences between individuals in their scores. For example, true differences between people in intelligence scores or true differences in anxiety scores between people. So between person differences um, we are interested in and we want to separate true or reliable between person differences from differences that are simply due to measurement error. So measurement error is represented by the epsilon variables here at the bottom. In summary, this model has a very simple measurement equation that holds for all time points. So yt indicates the repeated measures variable, t stands for the time point, and for each yt we have the same equation where yt is a function of the random intercept factor plus a time-specific measurement error variable epsilon t. So measurement error can vary across time, but the intercept factor score so is always the same regardless of time point, which means that we could say this is a trade model, so to say where the latent trade scores that are represented by the intercept do not change across time. So for example, this model would imply that 
true intelligence scores stay the same for a given person and that if we find differences in observed IQ scores, IQ test scores, then those differences would only be explained by a measurement error component that sometimes makes people score higher and sometimes makes people score lower on that IQ test. So it's a very simple model for longitudinal data and a good baseline model to test the hypothesis of no change in true scores across time. Now, if this model fit your data well, then you could stop, so say with the analysis and say, there's no change here. We don't have to introduce a more complex change model. We don't have to model growth curves, for example, or latent change because the true scores were stable across time and fluctuations in my observed scores is solely explained by random measurement error and I'm done, so to say. And then the conclusion would be that this construct is trade-like and stable for at least the period of time that is considered in the study. Now, what parameters are estimated in the model? One parameter is the mean of the intercept factor. So we can look at average intelligence scores, for example, at the latent level. Also, the variance of the intercept factor is estimated to quantify inter-individual differences in the true scores. And then finally, we estimate an error variance parameter for each time point for the error variables. So variance epsilon t is estimated four times here, which could um, reflect differences in the reliability. Sometimes, for example, at the first measurement occasion, there is more measurement error variance because there's more unreliability because participants have to get used to the procedure at the beginning of a longitudinal study and they may be more nervous. They have to learn how the items work, how the tests work and so on. And then later on, maybe measurement error is reduced because people are more confident. They know how the uh, procedure works, the test, and then they make fewer random errors. So there's differences. There are differences in the measurement error variances allowed across time. Now, typically, when we have a study where we expect changes across time, this random intercept model will not fit your data well, so you will reject it. And then the next step would be to think about what other longitudinal model you could examine that permits changes across time. Some people may change more than others. Some people might show increases in intelligence scores. Others might show declines over time, for example. And so then you would have to look for a model that reflects those inter-individual differences in intra-individual change across time. One option, for example, would be a growth curve model. So you could add a slope factor to the model or a growth factor that would, for example, represent linear growth or non-linear growth. And this is something that I discuss in other videos on this channel. So you can check out my playlist on growth curve models. You can check out other videos on longitudinal structural equation models here on this channel. Also check out the description for workshops that I give on latent growth curve models and general longitudinal models via Quantfish. Now this type of model here, random intercept model could be estimated with any kind of software for structural equation modeling such as M plus, Lavan in the, M in the R uh, software or AMES or Lisserl. And also a random intercept model could also be estimated as a multi-level model using long format data. So you could fit s uh, such a model also within the framework of hierarchical linear modeling with any program that's capable of running multi-level models such as again M plus would do it. R packages are available for multi-level um, data. SPSS even does it, HLM. So this is a model that can also be fit as a multi-level model. I hope you found this video useful to learn about the random intercept model for longitudinal data. If you did, then please uh, give it a like, subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.